Forest here, nothing like getting paid. And with ICCU's mobile app, I can deposit checks or accept Zelle payments so the money hits my account fast. I just wish there was an app for mowing the rest of these wands. Right now, Lithia Ford of Boise is buying used vehicles. How much you want for the SUV? Uh, I don't know. Well, Lithia Ford will give you more than that. How much more? More than you think. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking you might get even more than that. See how much more you can get at Lithia Ford of Boise. When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. Ropepaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coating solution. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Here's B.J. Reigns with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Hey, what's going on, Boise State fans? Happy Wednesday to you. Happy Winston Venable Day to you here at Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com. We got our, uh, as usual, double dip, double dose of Winston Venable starting with uh, his show, the Winston Venable Show here at 9 a.m., and then we get BNN After Dark tonight at 8. Winston, we always appreciate you giving up uh, – your time on Wednesdays, man. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. This Wednesday uh, is starting off pretty well, BJ, especially after a little win last weekend. So we got a nice win Wednesday here. I know they always say, uh, you know, as players and coaches, you know, you get 24 hours and you move on to the next game, win or lose. You don't have time to pout, whatever. But it does seem like the last couple of days, man, uh, ever since that second half, uh, that, that second half just kind of seemed to change the – trajectory of the season the outlook in the of the fan base I mean it was it was one half and that's the kind of big question can they carry that over and sustain that but to after that UTEP game man we did this show last week everybody thought the sky was falling they fire the OC the quarterback transfers and it seems like that second half kind of helped calm everybody down a little bit and, and realize that uh, it's a long season and winning the Mountain West and a lot of their goals are still attainable here yeah I mean as far as even just statistically probably i'm not 100 percent sure because i haven't looked at the stats but i would i would imagine that that second half was uh the most productive the broncos you know have played probably on offense for sure as far as the run game and all that so it was awesome to see and i know fans were probably tripping out in the first half thinking it was just an extension of you know the week prior but it was awesome for those guys to make some adjustments and and come out and finally get into a groove that hopefully is like something we can get uh, some consistency with moving forward. So we are, uh, as I said, uh, this is the first of two shows with Winston today. We're broadcasting, of course, from the Cutwater Canned Cocktail Studios. Check out more than 30 flavors of Cutwater Canned Cocktails at your nearest grocery store or gas station. Those pre-mixed cocktails uh, ready to go for uh, BNN after dark tonight would be a perfect time to uh, go get a couple and have with us uh, tonight. Uh, Winston, we've had four good episodes, not taking anything away from any of the four that we've had, but uh, me personally... Uh, in terms of just name recognition in this town, what they've you know uh, done after football, uh, the, the coming back to coach at BSU as well as playing. I think, uh, again, no disrespect to the previous four guests, this might be our biggest guest so far tonight. Hey, the man, the hit man, Jerron Johnson. I mean, um, yeah, this is one of my boys right here. Once again, uh, you know, all these guys I've tried to bring on are just I'm well connected to and um, – you know, they're good friends of mine, but JJ, man, uh, he's one of those dudes that he bleeds blue, man. And he really represented Broncos the right way on and off the field and had a heck of a career uh, post Boise State. And um, it'll be really fun to talk to some stories with Jerron. You know, he's he uh, he's got a lot of experience in the NFL and has played with some some great players and uh, had some cool roommates here, some NFL roommates as a Boise State Broncos. So um it's gonna be awesome connecting with jj 
Yeah, we could almost do a two-parter with him. One week we talk about his BSU time. One week we talk about his NFL time. I mean, uh, I know John Mallory, our uh, third co-host on that show, is very excited. He's a big uh, Jerron Johnson guy, so I know his notebook's already full of about 30 questions. So you and me can just kind of win, welcome him on, and then maybe we just leave and let, let Johnny take things over from here. But, uh, no, I think it's going to be really fun to, to hear some of the college stories from your time to, you know, gather playing there. And then also, like you said, winning a Super Bowl, being part of the Legion of Boom and all that in yeah. Seattle. Uh, it's going to be really cool. So uh, we tell you every week, but this is a uh, subscriber-only show. And I got to give you credit, Winston. Jerron had a little bump, man. When we first announced this on Monday, we had uh, right away within the first hour like five new subscriptions uh, from people that uh, are wanting to uh, hear Jerron. So this will be tonight at 8 o'clock. You have to be a subscriber of Bronco Nation News. The email with the link has already gone out. And by the way, we do have a page up on the website now called BNN After Dark. It is on – you go to the Live Videos tab and then click BNN After Dark, and that page will only load for subscribers. So if you're not a subscriber, uh, it's not going to work for you. But if you're a subscriber, you can now go watch the older episodes. You can now go uh, watch live the current episode. Uh, It's all on the page, uh, BroncoNationNews.com. Then go to the Live Videos tab and click on BNN After Dark. And, again, got to be a subscriber. We need four more, by the way, to get to uh, 600. I'm trying, Winston. You know, Albert Pujols was going for 700. I got the countdown on for 600. So I'm really trying to push uh, to get to 600 subscribers. That's a big goal I've had for about a month now. And we do have uh, four Pro Image gift cards left for the four people that help oh. us get that help us get to uh, 600. So 70 bucks for the whole year gets you the gift card. Uh, we'll throw in that round of golf at Timberstone as well. And then you get the link and the live access to tonight's show with uh, Jerron Johnson, which is sure to be a hit uh, here at Bronco Nation News. So Winston, nice work uh, getting Winston to, or getting uh, Jerron tonight, and we're really looking forward to that. It should be uh, should be a lot of fun, man. We're uh, we didn't know kind of what we were. Uh, oh, by the way, somebody says the BNN logo on Jerron's headset is sick. Man. I am gonna I am gonna take a little credit for that. I'll go back and uh, one more time and show you this. My Photoshop skills are improving. I couldn't show any Boise State logos. I had to kind of you know Photoshop those out. So I've got the BNN logo right there on the side of the uh, headset. So I, I was pretty impressed with that. I'm glad somebody noticed, Winston. There we go. I I, I, mean, I actually credit, no- I on. actually noticed. I liked it. I just didn't. I didn't uh, let you know yet. <laughs> well, come on, man. I, I I appreciate that. But everybody's uh all kinds of stuff. By the way, uh, BN, BNN beats headsets by Dr. Dre. Uh, there we go. Um, let's see here. By the way, Winston, before we get into the current stuff, uh, Kurt Blake says this is the 13th anniversary of your hit on the uh, Fresno State QB. Did you know 13th, that? 13th, man. I'm getting. I'm getting up there in some age, but that is uh that's awesome. That was in that was an awesome game. It was fun to play down there in Fresno too. So appreciate that, Kurt. The what do you out. make of the uh was the, the milk can? You guys had the milk can around, right? Was that the was that on the yeah. line when you guys played? I don't, right. the uh oh, yeah. the, the two sure. the two uh dairy farm well they didn't have it at the very beginning. I guess there was one or two matchups before the milk can actually started. Uh but the two dairy farmers of uh Idaho and of uh the, the, you know, the Fresno area got together and put the milk can on the line. Um, and uh, it's only on the line for regular season. So when they played in the uh, Mountain West Championship game, that that was uh, it was not on the line for that. Uh, but uh, what do you make of? Uh, I know that the teams haven't played every year because of this rotating Mountain West schedule, yeah. and the, sometimes the rivalry loses a little bit of its luster when you go two years where you don't play. But there's been some great games with them. They came in here in that snowy game in the championship and won yeah. uh, in overtime. You've had some other great games, but uh, to have a uh, rivalry trophy so to speak, the, uh, no, I mean, the on it, the line. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, it, it's big time. And I think that uh, that's something that's missing, not necessarily with Boise State, but like you hear about rivalries and you hear about, you know, other matchups in college football. And man, like we used to have it a little bit with Idaho and, um, you know, we have some stuff going now with BYU and Nevada and there's some, it's, you know, some stuff inside conference, but um, Fresno State's always been one. Even when I was playing that, there was some heat there. There's always a little bit of extra heat going into that game. Um, some of them have been battles and some of them have been blowouts. So uh, you don't know what you're going to get, but there's always some heightened sense of urgency for a Fresno State week. And I know both teams uh, got some bad blood. So it'll be it'll be a hyped up game no matter what. Now, I know what Jordan's doing here. He says, I'm really excited to see the boost to Boise State's viewership numbers this Saturday, given how huge Cal State Fresno's media market is. Now, when the talk of the Pac-12 and Big 12 expanding came a month or two ago, Fresno made a little graphic that showed their reach on the television market. They included, like, 
all these other counties and towns in California that probably don't care at all about Fresno State. And so uh, to say how many television you know, households watch their games. And so Jordan, I think, is taking a little shot there uh, at, at their number. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, they said it's going to be must see in Sacramento. Uh, but um, let's let's see here. Uh, you had a pit. When was the pick six? Was it the same game? Yeah, it was uh, 2009. Yeah. And you woke up today not realizing that was 13 year anniversary hey, today. Wow. No, man. I'm going to have to see if we can find that. By the way, let us know if you, we were trying to discuss this before we started. Uh, Jerron Johnson's most famous play at Boise State. Mm. So if uh, fans out there want us to try to play, a, a clip or two on BNN after dark tonight of uh, Jerron Johnson. What would you say was his favorite clip, favorite play, your most memorable play? What uh, hit or moment should I play and try to find for Jerron Johnson? And I'll play it tonight on uh, BNN after dark. Um, and uh, there's a lot of options, obviously. Um, let's see. Was it the Idaho state quarterback that Jerron Johnson jacked up uh, one, that, that was, one time? Nah, that was uh, that was a big hit for sure. He would be gone for several games uh let's see what we got here uh come on fresno yeah. we're ready can saturday get here already um so uh we will give us your give us your thoughts on jerron johnson we'll get to those uh you know and we'll try to find some of those for tonight eight o'clock and again you got to be a uh subscriber uh to oh i got like four people hit on the idaho state quarterback yeah. jj destroying the idaho state quarterback all right we'll do it we can uh We'll do what we can see what we can do to try to find at least that one for tonight, Winston, and have that uh, in the can uh, ready to go. But uh, oh, yeah. what'd you think, man? First half went pretty bad. Obviously, they're down 13 nothing at the half. I asked, uh, you know, uh, Dirk Cutter, um, you know, about uh, – and we will just play the first five seconds of this. But, I, you know, it's not going good. Cutter comes all the way back, and, and you're, you're wondering, okay, is this um, – you know, was this uh, worth it? Why, you know, Dirk Cutter was playing golf three times a week. Now he's – back and he's getting booed and they're down 13 nothing and i said uh did you think you maybe made a mistake yeah i was looking up my my wife in the loge and thinking about drinking a coors light or something <laughs> <laughs> and uh but the second half went a lot better winston and uh they scored 35 unanswered points and what a difference two halves make but um what's just your take on the Taylor green and Dirk cutter and uh the new look broncos uh, getting that win 35 13 over san diego state yeah, you know what? Uh, just going back to, I think, the week prior, we talked a little bit about, you know, is it going to get better right away or how much better can it get? And, um, you know, I, I even mentioned like, hey, it might not look good right away or it might get worse before it gets better. And I think that's kind of what we saw. Like Dirk's coming back in, play calling, hasn't play, hasn't uh, called plays for a while, trying to learn the terminology, all those type of things. Players are now getting accustomed to a, a new flow during the week. All those things are, uh, you know, that throws a little wrinkle in there. So they took a half. And um, the cool thing, you know, like the first drive, there was still some positives that I saw, like even though they went and, and didn't have much production, when you see a guy like Taylor Green be able to extend plays with his feet and scramble and take a shot and find cutter, you know, that's just going to like, open up this offense a whole bunch. And I loved Hank and Hank's ability to stand in the pocket and take shots and, um, and get the ball out and all that. But, you know, he went through injuries and we just have a quarterback now at Boise state that can extend plays and scramble. And it's just going to allow receivers to run around the field. And it takes, man, it's a, it's a tough deal as a DB trying to stick with receivers when, it, with this quarterback scrambling. So we're going to see more plays like that coming in the future. So there was a couple positives in the first half, but overall it took them that first half to get rolling. And second half, here comes some excitement. Kept it simple, and they balled out. Now I asked Coach Ritt on our postgame show the other night this, but, I mean, they only attempted four passes in the second half. Uh, yeah. It, you know, is it sustainable, you think, that uh, – that they can be a team that's going to run, you know, six out of every seven plays or whatever it is. And, and, and Kent's response was, well, doesn't it, does it work for air force? Um, and I, I know it's a little different obviously, but um, what do you, what do you make of this kind of new look offense? They're going to have to be able to pass the ball some, right? Yeah. I think that's the, you know, that's the alerting deal. There is where you look, you look at the, uh, the pass game and they didn't have to throw the ball though. Um, what they did was working. So yeah. Okay. Uh, defense is going to come in and load the box up and say, okay, try to run now. 
And okay, well, guess what? Taylor Green and Sam Vidlock, these guys are talented enough to throw the football. So that's the game that they're probably going to work on, right? Taylor Green's going to work on his passing game, continue to work on just a dominant run game, but he'll get better and progress. And the, the guy can throw the football. Let's not get this twisted. Taylor Green can sling the rock. So um, it's just about getting comfortable, getting reps. So, like you said, BJ, I don't know if it's sustainable. Um, because I think what's going to happen is the run looks not good and you'll have to throw the ball. And then that's, that's a scary thing for defense because they just put an extra guy in the box. Now it opens up the pass game. Now Taylor Green's showing everybody in the country. He's a dual threat. He can run and throw the football. Hey, if you're looking to get that concrete patio in your garage, your basement, your, uh, you know, uh, back patio outside, make sure you think no further than rowpaint.com. they got some great deals right now for the fall. Uh, their concrete coatings four times stronger than epoxy. You can get more information, roepaint.com. Make sure you uh, tell them you heard about it at Bronco Nation News, and they'll hook you up with a sweet deal. Uh, Lithia Ford of Boise, one of our big sponsors as well. Uh, Tough Town going on. they got the fall kickoff sale, so check them out, lithiafordboise.com. And, again, they'll buy your used car even if you don't buy from them. They'll make you a cash offer on the spot, so check them out, Lithia Ford. Boise.com, Idaho Central Credit Union, ICCU.com. Find out why over a half million Idahoans have made the switch to ICCU. Uh, one in four Idahoans, by the way. Uh, so uh, with Bronco Nation News, happy to have Idaho Central Credit Union as the official bank of Bronco Nation News. So get more information. Check them out at ICCU.com. If you're looking to get into the trucking industry, whether it's that big rig right there, the Amazon truck in your neighborhood, you can become a truck driver uh, pretty quickly and pretty easily thanks to TCS. So check them out, transcompservice.com. It's a very uh, booming career right now with the pandemic, and they can help you get your permits and get you towing that first load in no time. And our other major sponsor, we want to thank the Blue and Orange Store. Check them out, the Blue and Orange Store. Store.com. You can get free shipping on any order over $40 at the blue and orange store.com. They got all the NIL shirts, the coaches sideline apparel, the Nike gear. You can get it in person at the Boise town square mall right next to the pro image there on the second floor. Or again, you can order online, the blue and orange store.com and you get free shipping on any order over $40. So those are our five, you know, kind of main sponsors. You see all their logos back up here on the screen. We truly appreciate uh, their support and uh, allowing us to do this and, uh, you know, jack around and talk sports and whatever else on a daily basis. So we appreciate our sponsors. And uh, I wanted to talk about the read option, Winston, because you've seen it from both sides, man. You've been the linebacker trying to defend it. You've been uh, the running backs coach, uh, you know, at times seen it from the offensive side. Um, what, in your you know opinion, now that this is what they're going to be doing some uh, with Talon Green, you touched on it a little earlier, but just uh, whether Green keeps it, whether Green hands it off. We saw in the second half, once Green started keeping it, not only did that open things up for Green, but it also opened up things up for the other running backs too because they started, you know, keying on Green, and then there was holes for the other guys. So what's your take with uh, Green and Genty and Halani and, and those three kind of working together on this read option here, and how hard can that be for defenses? Yeah, I think, well, you know, as far as, as a, from a defensive perspective, anytime that you're you're sitting back there, linebacker, safety, or whatever, and there's multiple threats in the backfield, you know, just – not not where you're looking at a quarterback saying, hey, this guy can throw it, but like, hey, this guy's a, a threat in, in the run game. And then the guy to the side of him is also a threat. And maybe what they even showed last week, another running back on the other side. So there's some potential, you know, for the Boise State guys to have, you know, all three of those guys who you just mentioned in the backfield at one time, just like they had Tyler Crow in there doing some rim blocking and some different type of blocking schemes. Um I wouldn't be surprised if you see a three-headed monster in there all at the same time because as defense, when you start getting all this cross and motion and action just flow different ways, it just is messes with your eyes. So uh, it's all about eye control and discipline and assignment sound football. But when you got guys going different directions and you don't know, does George Halani have the ball or not? And then all of a sudden he doesn't and that ball's being pulled by Talon, and he's out one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter, it just makes it tough. It, it's really about your eyes, right? So that's why playing Air Force is super hard because there's a lot of movement going on in the backfield, and then, bam, there's just one crease that, that hits, and, and if your eyes are not in the right place, you know, these dudes are out. We asked uh, Kane Ione, the uh, co-defensive coordinator, safeties coach, yesterday uh, from his perspective in practice trying to stop this and then just in general the read option, those those problems that uh, Boise State's offense is now going to present for teams. Just the uh, – you talk about assignment sound football, right? 
and you're forcing somebody on the opposing team, you're putting a guy in conflict all the time, meaning that he's got to defend the run as far as the running back and also defend the inside portion of the quarterback when he pulls the ball. So it's, it puts somebody in conflict all the time. And you've got to have guys and numbers to be able to defend it somehow, somehow, some way. And if all of a sudden you bring those numbers down to defend the run, guess what now happens? They got an opportunity to go over the top with it. So that's the, the challenging part as a defense when you're facing a quarterback that has the ability to run, has the ability to hand it to a, a really good couple of running backs and, and an O-line that's getting pushed. It's all of a sudden you're putting a lot of guys in conflict play in and play out. Now, what was the, at the beginning of the uh, Tim Plow era we saw in that first game against uh, uh, UCF? It wasn't necessarily Bachmeyer keeping the ball and running, but a lot of his was either he hands it off or he could pull back and throw it, right? That's obviously yeah, different the, than the read option in terms of running it no matter what. But there yeah. are different variations of that, I guess, where Green could potentially hand it off, you know, pull it back if he doesn't like what he sees and still throw it too, right? Yeah, so that would be more – that would be like more of like the RPO, like the run-pass option. So then there would be like a zone read where really it probably is going to be either handing the ball off or keeping it. So uh, that run that run pass option might be based off like – a linebacker in the box, you know, is there a linebacker there or not? You know, did the Mike linebacker leave? Well, then we're going to hand this ball off. If he stays, we're going to throw it. All right. So then there's zone read where there might be reading the end man on the line of scrimmage. Maybe it's a defensive end. Uh, if that defensive end crashes down and he's playing the running back, well, then Taylor Green's going to keep it. And if he doesn't, then he's going to hand it off. So it's just about reading defenders and and playing a game. And it's a it's a game that not all quarterbacks can do. That's not something that Hank that zone read. Not something that Hank's uh, was that wasn't his style. That wasn't his deal. So this is a cool new deal for Boise State um, to see a guy like Taylor Green run a little zone read and and keep the ball and have numbers like a hundred yards rushing. And like I said earlier, I think the pass game is going to improve and. And and sorry, BJ, I got to flip the script because I didn't mention it. But let's not uh, let's not forget that defense with Coach Ione out there. Um, shout out to those dudes, man! Bronco Nation and that defense held it down, and I mean they caused some major issues to, to for uh, for winning that football game. I mean that was impressive defensive play and Bronco nation had a lot to do with it. So yeah, let's, that was let's sweet, man. No, no doubt about it. I mean, uh, 14 false starts, uh, in yeah. two games. So in two games, uh, eight in the first game against UT Martin. And you think, okay, San Diego state, a veteran team, they're going to come in, not be as, uh, whatever by the crowd, you know, intimidated. And they had six, I think it was that, that South end zone down there, man. Oh. Uh, and, and, you know, it's kind of a talking point sometimes. Oh, they have great fans. It's loud, whatever. But, you, you know, you think about some of the situations where it went from third and two to third and seven for San Diego State's defense. I mean, there, it, there's times yeah. where those false starts can really – there was one time where it was first and goal from the five. The false start pushes them back to the ten, and they have to settle for the field goal. I mean, those, those false starts can really change the complexion of a drive in a series. Yeah, these are like – this is like confident. Not only does it make it hard on their job, like to, to do their job while all that noise is going on, but then you're getting flags and flags and flags, totally tearing down your confidence. And then just Boise State's defense and the fan base confidence skyrocketing. And it's like, dude, you're doomed, man. If you're messing around with Bronco Nation and Boise State's defense, I mean, that's a, that's a challenge. That's a big challenge. So – I think it was like JL might have knocked out their their quarterback or yeah almost yeah, got, was, yeah they reviewed it for targeting yeah. and said it was no targeting there was helmet to helmet on that that was a little scary for a moment uh, but uh, yeah he didn't come back in and the crowd was going nuts on they, that play yeah they brought in two quarterbacks after that and you could really tell with the momentum of Boise State's offense in the second half and what the defense has done uh, T Jones with the pick and how dominant those dudes were they, I don't even know if you know, San Diego State's offense really wanted to be out there. I mean, it was one of those – it really was one of those demoralizing games where uh, Boise State was dominating on the defensive side, and San Diego State, didn't. you know, they're down to like their third or fourth-string quarterback. I don't know if he wanted to be out there. 
116 total yards in the game, I think it was, for San Diego State. And I think in uh, two games in Mountain West play, now again, it's New Mexico who doesn't have much of a quarterback and also San Diego State. But I think that uh, combined passing yards in the two Mountain West games is like 133 for the other team. So Boise State has been yeah. locking it down on defense. Hey, BoiseDentistryCo.com, check them out if you're looking for a new dentist. That's my dentist on the screen there. Dr. Miner does a tremendous job, and uh, you'll be very happy if you make the switch for your whole family, kids, grandparents, whoever, full family dentistry and they've got locations across the treasure valley check them out boisedentistryco.com united commercial insurance as well we got a lot of business owners that uh, watch the show well why don't you lower your business insurance uh, rates so uh, they can do that for you at united commercial insurance check them out united commercial insurance.com uh, 44 states around the country they can write policies for business insurance so 229-8222 check them out united commercial insurance they make business insurance easy and ridley's family markets as well shop ridleys.com love that cuno location down there they got 13 locations locations across the state of Idaho. The McCall one is very popular for folks when you're pulling into town. Check them out. Uh, they got the at-home shopping, the Skip app, the home delivery, all that stuff. So make sure you check out Ridley's Family Markets. And, of course, Matt Boucher as well, the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. Check them out, BoucherRealEstate.com. Uh, no home is too big or too small for Matt Boucher. And uh, he's all in, Winston, for year two of the uh, Matt Boucher show as well. I know nice. when I was talking to you about doing this, you said you had seen some of uh, his shows, and that helped uh, convince you to jump on board here. So um, – we're uh, looking forward to that. And, and uh, Winston, maybe we should have talked about this off the air, actually. But wh when's the big announcement, the big reveal here? The bye week, right? Next week we got a big announcement about your well, – Let's go bye week. Maybe All talk right. a little bit about what I've been up to lately. Okay. And, uh, so we'll keep yeah, it, we'll sure. keep it at that till next week. But uh, we got to – next Wednesday we'll spend a little time uh, updating folks on what Winston's doing these days. And, and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that because it's pretty cool. And you still have a big-time connection to some former Boise State uh, – players and things and so uh yeah maybe a maybe a new look to the the, the screen here and we'll uh, we'll yeah. work on that for uh, next week so i just thought of that while i was thinking of matt Boucher. so we'll, we'll get to that next week but uh in the final couple minutes here winston and the comments are kind of rolling in let's see um let's we'll see what we got here bsud feasted it was a feeding frenzy um let's see when you see green do you have flashbacks of uh playing kaepernick <laughs> uh no it is a uh... You know what? That's 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 interesting. Cap wore number ten too, didn't he? I think so. Yeah, pretty pretty sure he did. Uh, what do you yeah. make of? Uh, okay, bro, chill. Says Talon so clean with that pole. Hard to tell when he keeps it and gives it. Uh, and then Perry said the cameraman got faked out a few times as well. Yeah, there isn't there isn't art right to, to 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 pulling it and keeping it. Yeah, I mean, you know, ride and decide. Sometimes you know those guys are making last minute decisions, so they're really riding that running back it's still in his gut still in his gut and then he pulls it out late so that's what i'm saying i mean it's hard to tell you it's like you call it the mesh um you know sometimes man it's hard to read the mesh who has the ball um and sometimes it's not about that it's like if i'm a defensive end or a linebacker and it's like my job is the quarterback then it does not matter if george helani has the ball just make sure that your eyes are on Taylor green because you know, if they're not, he gone. <laughs> now, um, we've talked uh, numerous times about Ashton Genty, and I know my friend uh, Jordan K talked to you yesterday, and there's a story in the yeah. Idaho Press today about Ashton. But uh, obviously, you uh, were involved in his recruitment, didn't get a chance to obviously coach him, but you were very involved in, in getting him to Boise State and watching him. And we've talked a lot about him, but he had 82 rushing yards again on uh on last friday and and here's a quick quote first from billy bowens talking about ashton Jensen. yeah i mean he works his tail off and he has a great guy like george in front of him that he could see every day and learn from every day and you know george had great guys in front of him that he learned from and it just keeps getting passed down you know so he, he's bought in in their meetings he's always locked in on the field he's always asking and, and learning from those guys and me and him are always talking too is like he, he wants to get better and you could tell he has that edge and he has that fire in him Oh my goodness! I don't even know. I, sometimes I'm in the game and I'm watching. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go block. I gotta go block. It's amazing. Even him, Taylor, and George, all those guys, like just seeing them make moves and stuff like that. It, it, it's a sight to see. I know we've talked about, uh, like I said, numerous times about him and what you thought he could be. Um, but 82 yards in that game the other day, it was 18 yards short of Boise State becoming the first time in, in program history with 300 yeah. yard rushers. Uh, what do you make of uh, the freshman Genty and what he's been able to do here? Yeah, I think he's just getting rolling, BJ. I think he's just, just as that offense is getting rolling too. I think uh, Bronco Nation's in for a treat. I think that dude's going to be a stud for, you know, the next three years here, four years here. Um, but it's like, 
I think people are going to find out he's going to have a hundred yards receiving and it's not going to be out of the backfield. You know, it's going to be like, Hey, he's lined up at receiver this week. And it's like, yeah, that's what that dude can do. Um, so that's, what's going to pose, you know, I hope they play around with that a little bit where, you know, you got George in the backfield and he motions out, Genty motions in and hand the ball off. There's just so many things with guys like Genty and George, but um, yeah, I think Bronco nation just is getting a, just a taste, just a little appetizer of what that dude can do. I think he's going to be a baller. And with George, is it good? To, I mean, he's been injured the last couple of years. I mean, just, just to see him back, and he's he's back on pace now. I think if he can keep this going to get close to 1,000 yards again, have his career high in touchdowns. Um, it, it, for you, obviously knowing him pretty closely and coaching him the past couple of years, it's just, I think he had 131 yards himself. I mean, to see him get going again and, and look like the old George, that's got to be pretty good for you to see. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. I mean, I think that there's been some spurts at George, you know, a couple nice runs here and there. He had a nice couple runs at UTEP, but overall offense wasn't doing too hot. But he's going to he's gonna be just fine. I think George, and as these guys are going, I know we're going into week five or six, six now, and, um, you know, we're getting to that halfway point. But, you know, I think I was an NFL coach. I can't even remember who I was watching. But it's like, oh, it's always about playing your – best ball at the end, right? I mean, it's uh, this gradual increase. So any improvement is going to be really good for Boise State. But I think they're the, I think that things are just getting rolling. And obviously now with new personnel change on staff, like you kind of got to hit a little bit of a reset button and give these guys a chance to start meshing with maybe some new ideas and new ways of going about things. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm real hopeful that George gets rolling and has a couple more hundred yard uh you know, games and, and, and does really well. I, I, he's, everybody there has got the ability. George definitely can put together some consistent games. That'd be awesome to see. Well, again, tonight, Winston will be back with uh, Johnny and I, BNN after dark, 8 PM tonight. It'll be Jerron Johnson, uh, our special guest. Uh, I know, as I said, Johnny's really excited to talk about the Super Bowl and his NFL playing career. We got all the stories from college and things as well. So really looking forward to this. Uh, good job, Winston, uh, locking in Jerron. This will be a lot of fun. Hopefully we can get him to, uh, you know, tell some stories and relax and have some fun tonight. And, again, this is a subscriber-only show, so uh, you still have time to jump on board. We need four more subscribers to get to 600. I would love to get there by uh, the start of this show. Uh, you got a link in your email already if you're a subscriber. If you don't, you can go to bronconationnews.com, the live videos tab, click on BNN After Dark. Hopefully you see the uh, show there at the bottom, which will go live if you refresh your page at 8 o'clock. So there's two ways to watch it if you are a uh, subscriber. And I think this is going to be one of the best ones yet, man. They've all been great. We keep hearing great feedback. Really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun tonight, Winston, and uh, looking forward to it, man. Ha have a great day, and we'll talk to you tonight. All right, BJ, we'll see you later on, man. Looking right forward on. to it, man. He's Winston Venable. I'm BJ Rains. Grab your cut waters. Come hang out with us tonight, 8 o'clock. We'll have a lot of fun. What do we got here? The vodka mule. You never know what you'll pull out of the uh, thing here. But uh, we'll have a great day, everybody. 8 o'clock tonight. Subscribers, looking forward to it. Jerron Johnson, BNN After Dark. This is uh, Bronco Nation News.